Any public discussion? We'll go ahead. Louis, United Health Advisor or Representative, to discuss the policy option. We'll down to that. We'll you guys up. So, your turn. Okay, so thank you for having us today. Aaron's filled me in a little bit on, on uh, uh, what's happening, what the options are, the current situation with the budget. Uh, I First, and my name is Christopher Dunham. I'm the uh, office manager and the sales manager here for the state of Oklahoma. So I came along today just to kind of fill in any questions that may not have been answered in gray areas. Uh, I, I see this to be pretty clear uh, win-win situation for everybody involved. I understand that we're looking and proposing to provide coverage, maybe even supplemental coverage to spouses of employees of the, of the commission, is that correct? So, so I understand that there's a budget and that's something to be conscientious of. And so that's, that's ultimately what my job to do is to try to see if we can determine exactly how much the savings are going to be. In addition to that, it's also providing you know, better or equal or better benefits than what you currently have because it doesn't do us any good to save your own money if we're providing you exact benefits. Right. That's not what we're here to do. At the same time, the preliminary numbers that we have been throwing around just off of a, a spreadsheet, somewhere in the two hundred eighty to five hundred thousand dollars a year. Uh, at the same time, providing those some of those benefits across the board. One thing I wanted to point out—I don't know if this has been said or not—but the association benefits, Aaron mentioned, that you guys have been discussing those as options, as ancillary benefits to go across to the spouses and dependents. Those can be carried over by everybody that's employed, also bettering their current insurance. So whatever we're doing on the, that side of the employee benefits, uh, we'll be increasing those benefits to all spouses and dependents of the uh, uh, county employees. How can I be of assistance? Um, we've got some employees that have diabetes, things like that. Um, what kind of coverage do you have on that? We have actually, we have, so we have a menu of different products. Uh, the, the association coverage itself can be sold or protected and put in place on its own. Uh, for those, our, obviously everybody's not going to be the same. One of the problems that you all are currently having with what we're seeing right now in the state of Oklahoma and on a national level is insurance is cookie cutter, it's all the same. The problem is it doesn't fit everybody. So we can go in and we can design certain products and build the plan specifically to fit every individual's needs, which is where we're sort of unique. At the same time, for those folks that have diabetes or that have special needs, we have products we can put in place for them. Maybe we're just putting association coverage in place and, and, and then extending them out to another, you know, another broker or to the Affordable Care Act or to something like that. So it just depends on the circumstances of the situation. We have guaranteed issue products that have diabetes care plans. So if that's a, if that's a circumstance, then we're going to do that. Where we'll help you greatly is for those that don't need those things, we can, you know, cut that part out, which is going to save uh, the end use of money. And I have one, his wife has MS, and she takes some kind of high dollar stuff like four times a year, a heck of a shot. I bet, yeah. And in her situation, and I've got clients who are on my plan currently, I insure you know, a lot of Oklahoma, I have 3,000 or so clients. One of them has MS. Um, had he come on with MS, I wouldn't necessarily say that, that our products are the best thing for him. Uh, because there are things out there that, that we don't broker that we can put them in place <coughs> with folks that we work with and we put that person on a plan where we're fitting their needs. But every person that we're going to be looking at, and that's kind of what I'm here today is to determine you know, how we need to go about doing this. If we're talking ancillary blanket coverage, it doesn't matter what you have. If you've got no need whatsoever, if you've got high needs for durable medical equipment, we're going to put everybody on that blanket policy. And that's going, to, that's going to supplement what you all are trying to do, and it's going to reduce your costs. We can do that without looking at anything. I need names and phone numbers uh, so I can reach out to them. But at the same time, if we're looking at it, it, it providing equal or greater to greater than base health insurance policies has have, have stop losses and have needs that are assessed for each individual, you know, that's something we can do too. It's just that it's not going to be for everybody because there are going to be folks that we need to continue on the ACA policies or under a Blue Cross and Blue Shield plan as a base. We can provide them with some supplements, but and it, it, those combined will be less expensive. Than, I've seen the numbers we're going through now. But we're going to get creative with it. So, and there's a lot of benefits, I think, uh, and I don't know what, what how this comes into play, but there's tax benefits to it also. Uh, certain, if, if some of these benefits are reimbursed to the uh, employee, 
uh, or in any kind of way, and I don't know if that's, is that, is that something that we're talking about doing? Is, is, is there any reimbursement to the employee for their spouses? Okay. I'll skip that part. I think my biggest thing is if we change our insurance, we, want, we do not want anyone to get their coverage dropped in any way, shape, or form. Right. Right? Our employees are our greatest asset, so. And it's on us to make sure that we do that part. I've got a team that we can come up. We will sit down with everybody that we feel is of need. There are going to be folks that I can talk to over the telephone, and we won't even need to see them. There are going to be folks I need to sit down with, and we may have an agent come out and sit down and, and, and discuss and do a full needs analysis. And in that case, we'll determine what the best thing to do is. Okay. Sure. I have a question. I was listening to you. Mm -hmm. um, I don't understand a lot of it, but I was listening to you. Mm -hmm. You were saying that if you needed to, you would reach out to the ACA and the Affordable Care Act for some of the coverage. How does that happen if we're with an insurance company? How, and what would be the result of that? Why would you reach out? Your company doesn't cover that? Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. I, I'm licensed in the state of Oklahoma. I can put you on a Blue Cross and Blue Shield plan in five minutes. During the open enrollment period, we can put you on a Blue Cross Blue Shield. Would that be the same as the whole county, or then I'd have to have something separate if I had something that I would need a special thing? You're saying it would be the need. same as the whole county. So, so anybody that, that would have special need that we may not be able to go in and help because they have uh, MS or they need they have a need for durable medical equipment or something that maybe that the specific one of the, the specific plans that we have does not fit that need then we would, we would utilize the tools that have been given to us under the Affordable Care Act because the, the, if the Affordable Care Act is used correctly, it's a great tool for somebody that's of high need or even of low income because we can go out and we can set those individuals up on a plan that, where they're medically subsidized, but they're also given the coverage without any stipulations. It's for the folks that don't need all of those things that we can come in and we can help out and we can, we can put them on a plan that's ACA compliant, but we're saving the family or the employer of money in doing so, and we can extend coverage. But, but we'll be able to help everybody across the board on as far as the association coverage goes. But when we're talking about paying for specific needs, covering certain things like durable medical equipment, long-term care, diabetes care plans, uh, these are not blanket policies. These are things that we need to look at and, and be uh, a little bit uh, uh, creative on in terms of just assessing the needs for the individual. Because ACA, the way it stands, is costing you guys a sorry, ridiculous number. The, the reality is, is I can help 70% typically in most business situations. When I'm walking, talking to a, to a business that's got 15 employees, I can typically help 70% of those employees. The other 30 are no worse off because we're not, we're simply either not changing their policy, we're not taking them off of what they're on, or we're setting them up on something <coughs> that may fit their needs better and we can spread the money around so it fits those that high But they have a separate something policy then, than what we all have? Yes. And the county pays for that? So yeah, we're, we're paying full insurance. Yeah. So. Are we talking about we're going to have multiple insurance companies then? So, so what you're talking about, so, so you're currently, you're, you're, you're your plans are for the, and I, this is the part I don't understand. The, the, the existing coverage for the county is done through a brokerage, or is everybody out, no. goes out and gets it on their own, or do you have no. one big health plan? We have one big health plan. Got it. So what we're talking about doing is we're talking about, if we're talking about spouses, I understand that you all are, are you're, you're, you're tabling the idea of taking the spouse's independence off of those plans completely, or, or no, stopping the not, coverage for those? No, they're covered through... December 31st. I mean, and then, we'll, and then what? Well, we've already budgeted in to continue to pay them this physical year. Our right. insurance is calendar year. Sure. Our budget is fiscal year. Sure. So we've already budgeted that in for the fiscal year. But um, by us doing that, that ends in the middle of the calendar year. So then again, we're already. When does the fiscal year end? Our fiscal year is July 1 to June 30th. Mm -hmm. And so your calendar year end for the insurance is December 31st, beginning again January 1st. Right. So what I would do here is I would look at, there are going to be a number of folks on their employees and spouses that are going to qualify for our preferred risk policy. In doing that, we're going to be able to bring them all in, give them a lower, better rate, and then you would have two insurance companies. You'd have what you have now, and then, and, and then everybody else that is 
on that existing policy would simply drop off of that, reducing your costs. We'd absorb them, and then we would so be able to reduce costs. So you answer the costs. insurance questions then when they call in? Yeah. As far as the insurance questions go, yes, technically your agent, which would be Aaron and several other agents, we'd have a team of agents that would provide this. They have an, an agent that they can actually, they can call and say, hey, I have a question about prescriptions. We do provide customer service. This is one of the reasons we are one of the only insurance companies. Well, we are the largest under 65 conglomerate insurance company that's still providing benefits to folks in the United States today. That was my next question. What about our retirees? Over the age of 65, that's not a market. Under 65, we're a market. So then they would basically just stay with public choice then? They stay exactly where they are. We're only proposing that we but change. We have the some of them that are under 65, of course, but mm -hmm. I mean. Some. So anybody some, that's a most of them are going to be over 65. Anybody that's a candidate for what we're proposing to do, we're we're, we're not talking about doing anything other than, than providing them with a, a, a different option that's going to reduce the cost to the, to the county and to the consumer. At the same time, we can extend coverage to the family and the spouses, and then at the same time, we're 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 not just reducing costs; we're increasing benefits. We're giving certain folks that that we can insure. Uh, greater coverage because their cost and their risk is lower. We're assessing the risk. And, and for those that are of, of low risk, we're going to bring them in, we're going to put them on a plan that, that has better coverage, and we're going to save money across the board. And we're talking a lot of money. At the same time, we're, we're also talking a lot better benefits. Those that are, you know, let, let me say, in special need, that, 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 that have uh, certain needs that, that we can't facilitate. Now, remember, we have a menu of products. We're not talking about one plan, we're talking about multiple plans. But those that, there are going to be some folks that we can't help. I always run into that every time because it's a statistical number that's going to happen. It's typically 30%. Those folks are going to stay on the plan that you already have set up, but we're releasing some funds to you. We're reserving or saving you money by, by putting them, the other folks on better coverage. So it, it's a, it, it sounds complicated, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's very simple now. Typically, I'll go in and I'll, we'll, we'll help a small business with 50 employees. We'll save them you know, around $75,000 a year. That money can be then reallocated to do whatever they want to do, but, but those, those small businesses now have better insurance for those that need it and for those that don't. Even those that don't, that aren't using their insurance except for one time a year for a doctor's visit, where you all are paying level benefits, level premiums for all of those folks. It doesn't, it doesn't work to, in your favor because you're paying out for the team. So. That's what we're, what we're talking about doing is essentially dividing, putting other folks on a different insurance policy and keeping the ones under the ACA that we can. The ACA offers benefits. So there are going to be folks that are maximizing those benefits. There are going to be folks that are not using them at all. We can save you money on the ones that are not and provide that customer at the same time with better coverage in the event that they do need it. And we do it year to year. As long as there are employees that are over 65, you still cover them. Over 65 is the senior market, so so we don't we don't work on our insurance company is under 65. It's a different license. It is a different market. So you would stay with what you have. Yeah. Huh? So you would stay with what you have. And again, we're saving you anywhere from 200 right. to half a million dollars in your budget. And we have resources. I have resources I can bring in that would handle the over 65. Other other firms that I partner with. This is preliminary for me. I'm just trying to assess the situation, see if this is something we can help you with. I think that it is, but the over 65s, uh, I have another uh, partnership that I would bring somebody else in that's, that's licensed. It's a totally different market. Yeah. And we're going to have quite a few. Right. Well, Jay's over there. How many employees are there? I know I got. So we would we would we would collectively understand we would build a census. Uh, we would take all of the ages of all the employees. We would put a census together. I want to see what the current premiums are. You know, I, I want a basic understanding of needs, which is something that we could probably would collect quite easily. We would build a census, and we would give you a bottom line number that's going to be very very close to exactly what we could do, and we would show you those in red who we would bring over, and those that we could not, we would leave on their existing plan. But the difference is the cash that's, that's freed up to the county. 
Is there, is there a charge for you to do this? Like, so say Jane Doe has no spouse, has no dependents, has no medical problems, and you show that you can get an insurance lower, mm -hmm. but she chooses to stay where she's at. I mean, and we have everybody do that. Is there a charge for no. you to do this? No, there's no charge. If we get to the point where this looks like something it's going to be that we're going to do, it's it, it's my job to make sure that this is worth my firm's time to do. I think that it is. And if we get to the point where I think that it's not, or it's not in the best interest of both parties, it's not a win-win-win situation. How, how long are you talking? Because we're, our auction period will be coming up in October. I can build a census in two weeks. For, for, I'm, I saw 97 employees. Is that, is that accurate? Um, we have probably... A little over 100 now. I calculated around $280,000 in savings based off of 30% of those to be conservative. If we were to look at the you know, more liberal side of that, more realistic, more realistic side of that, you know, we're, we're talking about a larger percentage of that group. Let's call it half. That's on top of the, what was it, $240,000 in savings that you were looking at with switching? That's on top of that. So we're doubling your savings, possibly more than doubling your savings. It's going to be depend. It's going to be different for every individual. So the current deductible. What what does the current plan look like? I don't know what the current plan looks like. Is it six thousand eight hundred fifty dollars out of pocket max? It's less than that. Thirty five hundred. So we need to get a hard line number on that to see what it is to give you the, the actual cost savings. I need to see the actual deck pages or just the basic the the out of pocket and the deductible and the networks and then what I will do is in anybody that we can help there's going to be a large percentage of and I have to see the census but we're talking a zero dollar a zero dollar deductible for those that are preferred risk now we're going to have a, a substandard risk in that same group we're going to have a a, 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 a guaranteed issue or a substandard risk so we have preferred moderate substandard risk okay the preferred risk is going to be no deductible. The moderate risk is going to have somewhere between a three thousand and a six thousand dollar deductible, and then the substandard would have, you know, basically ancillary options. That that would be something that we would actually table whether or not to put them on. Those folks are going to stay on the ACA. Posted basically does that for you guys already, but from what I've understood, you guys have opted out of any of that. And you always just stick with health choice. I mean, there's seven other insurance companies with OCM but we've always stayed with Health Choice High. You know, when they get that book, all those other ones that are out there, it's the same thing. I mean, if an individual wants to go with another plan, but we've always just, I mean, this happened before I came in, we've always just said that they would take Health Choice High. I don't know why that was ever not an option. But there's like, you know, there's, two pages of other insurance companies out there in that book. Yeah, so, you know, and, and health choice is something that I know a lot about because I, I actually work with teachers right now to open enrollment period. So, so our primary focus is on helping teachers that, that are provided with 100% or they have a per diem amount they can cover and they can pick out a health choice catalog. The problem with health choice is that it's blanket. So it's cost per individual, uh, and then there's a cost to add the spouse and a cost to add children. So when you have a plan that's set up that's blanketed like that, it's done because of the ease of doing so. You have you have a you have a primary employee, employee plus spouse, employee plus spouse and child. All those prices are the same because they have to average the cost of the risky and the not so risky into those groups. Well, so when we're coming into a situation, we're looking at it from a risk perspective. If we can take those that are of low risk by simply asking a couple of questions and say, okay, we can move this person over here, we can reduce their premium according to health choice by about 70%, increase their benefits, and then offer the ancillary products back to maybe the one person that's still on health choice or the employee. It would be an employee's option to cover themselves under the plan and then maybe add the spouse on with us to reduce costs. With teachers, we're very successful because the way that the teachers are set up is they have their premium, their monthly, what they make in salary includes what they pay in the premiums, except for the spouse and children. This is very costly because health service is a great plan, has a very low deductible, but the problem is that you have a large cost 
on the employees, the spouse, the spouse and children. So that's where we step in, and typically we're saving 70%. And in a situation where I'm saving the average customer 30%, we're talking $300 per policy per month. And that's 3,600 a year. In your case, it's extended much larger than that because this is a big group. Uh, but, but at the same time, we wouldn't do this any differently because if somebody is not a candidate for one of our preferred risk or moderate risk, we're going to leave them where they are because we would be doing them a disservice. Yeah. So according to what you're saying, even if we end up staying to health choice employees, you can still come in and do spouses and children. Yeah, that's why I, actually what I thought we were doing. And if that's the case, then, then again, if, you know, there, there are a lot of different angles that can go, but it's a, every single option is a win-win situation. Uh, we just have to we have to do it on an individual basis. So we need names and phone numbers. We need to reach out. We, they have to opt in. They have to elect in. We can't force them to do it. It has to be their option. But at the same time, we're going to sit down. It's on us to sit down with each of them and explain to them, hey, here are your benefits. Here's what we're doing better than what you currently have. What you currently have is restricting you for doctors and putting a large deductible for your outpatient visits. We're going to, we're going to reduce or eliminate that completely. And at the, bottom, at the same time, we're going to save you money. If the employee stays on the plan, they get all those association benefits they are going over with you for free. They're given to you. So that's reducing the deductible, but it's 3000 something, to 500 in an accident. Or it's supplementing them at $800 a day for every day they spend in the hospital. At the same time, you don't have the restrictions you have with Health Choice. Health Choice has restrictions on what doctors you can go and see. We're going to give everybody national coverage because that's the way that these plans are designed to do to work. So we don't have networks. You can go anywhere in the country. You're covered 24 hours a day, seven days a week on and off the job. These are basic uh, options given to everybody, whether regardless of risk. So we just have to assume, we just have to assess the risk. I need to build a census so I can do some more numbers. But just well, looking at this, there's hundreds of thousands. I'm not going to vote answers. That's real easy. I know. Extension, and I, it's now there's a phone number on the back. There's a phone number on the back of your card now, but they still call me. <laughs> well. Are you talking about calling you for questions about health insurance? Okay, so we become the mod, we can become the mediator in that situation for those that come over to us. At the same time, they've got a home office 800 number. You can tell them that, tell them that, tell them that, but I can guarantee you they'll still call up here. Trust me, my phone so. rings all the time. So, so it, it's one of those things. Well, yeah. And once they're familiar with it too, um, we have some. We have the best customer service. Once they call and experience that, they'll remember it. No, they won't. <laughs> they'll still call up there. Well, no, she's just, right. <laughs> she's, she's absolutely right. But at the same time, you know, we we can we can do this. We can go as far as to hand out our card. And we have magnetic, magnetic versions, put it on your fridge. If you have any questions about your health insurance, call me. It's that simple. What they do from there, the, the, the 800 number is on the back of their car, but most people know one thing about their insurance, you know, or two things. They know how much the premium is and where the car is. Sometimes they don't know that. Sometimes they don't know the deductible. But at the same time, those that do know, are know because they have, they depend on their insurance. And we want to make sure that what we're, we are doing for them even if it's, if it's short term customer service is saying this is not a very good option for you, you need to stay where you are. At least the ones that we can carve out of that group, you know, there's there's long term savings uh, for, for everybody here. So. I would want approval from the employees before I give out that information. You probably have a lot of employees, and I don't mean to interrupt, but you probably have a lot of employees that are, that are wishing that there was another option that's less expensive or that provide them with you know greater access to doctors uh, uh, you know it's just a thought but I the way I understand it is, and from what I'm gathering here is that, that the county pays a hundred percent for the employee and the spouse and that's where it's hard to get them Are you the right right now yeah <laughs> yeah so no. That, that nobody that's that's unheard of these days yeah. just nobody does it there's always a, a split or, a, or you know a, a employee contribution amount at almost every level you know, and that's something that if that were ever to become a situation where uh, the, and I know that would not be a popular vote, but if, if the county ever decided to cover the employees only and charge or, and let the employer, employee spouse and children add in, kind of like with health choice, at a cost, uh, that's where we would come in. This would be as simple as we set up a booth downstairs and we sit here for two days, take applications. Those that sign up, sign up. Those that don't want it, don't want it. I'm willing to do that too. And that's typically how we'll do it in a situation where it's a, up to a vote. 
we come up for two days, we set up a, a booth, we take questions. We well, I'm thinking like in that case you're going to have them jump into They're some jump free things. Right. But right now, my concern on that is uh, what drives employees how to change anything when we're paying the whole thing. They're going to just be like, they're good the way it is. How long and that, see, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a I can tell you that free is hard to beat. But yeah. when you have when you have to pay for it, and that's what we see with the teachers and the vet associations and the real estate associations and the Oklahoma Bar Association and all the CPAs that we do business with, that's our that's our key market. They don't have that option. So you know when you've got an eleven hundred dollar premium and you're thirty years old with a spouse and one child at home, and you're paying more than you know you are you're paying twice as much for your insurance premium as you are for your mortgage. Uh, it's and I'm going to give you better options. It's clear cut. Yeah. But, but in this kid's situation, that is a question that, that I'm actually here to ask you. If you're paying 100% for the employees, what incentive do they have to change? Yeah. I, I think when my understanding, of course, I, get, I have the privilege of sitting here and hearing y'all talk, that it was a limited time anyway. As soon as the order was going, I mean, not stay. Mm -hmm. Well, they told them to run out. Yeah, they told them to run out. They take it away. Yeah, it's put in as a benefit. Mm -hmm. Right. And we made that very clear, but at the same time, a bunch of the employees still don't seem to realize that. Because when I talk to my employees, even, you know, someone's saying, why would we take that away now? <laughs> don't take that away. Well, remember when we started what we said about this? Well, I'm not going to get away from it. Don't take mine away. Yeah, sure. Sure. Right. <laughs> but here's the thing, too. Like, here's my, yeah, here's my thing, is if you do, we're going to be saving grace for those that, that have to get out. Because what, what's out there, outside of this well-insulated establishment, again, I, I'm wanting, I want to work here too, uh, but it, what's outside of this insulated establishment in terms of cost of coverage is uh, shock and awe. You know, the rates are going at 50%, again, with Blue Cross. And Blue Cross is the only insurance company in Oklahoma. The, 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 I, I don't want to bore you the details, but, but they're going to go up 50% on individuals next month. The deductibles are going to 7500 not 3500 and they're going up in incre increments that, that if they, if your employees are in a situation where their spouse and children have to go out and buy their own insurance, um, we can help you big time. And tell them, no, the employee doesn't see much incentive in changing, except for I can tell them all day long, oh, we're giving you better coverage. We're going to provide you with better doctor's offices. Level premiums, if our costs were the same as, as what you have currently, we would be a better insurance policy for them, but they're not going to know that until they have to use it. They're not going to know that until they have an accident. That $3,500 is the reason they would want to come to us. It's a win for you because you're saving money. It's a win for them because it could cost them less out of pocket in the event that they have an accident. And we are providing them with better coverage. It's not level. So, so the incentive to them right now, if they're not using it, they don't know the difference because they're not the ones writing the checks for the premiums. But I can tell them all day long, we're going to give you better insurance. And most people remember what it's like to have to meet that deductible. So the ones that are going to sign up right now are the ones that have had to meet their deductible on last year and that are looking for better coverage because they ran into trouble with the networks or what have you. They couldn't go see the doctor they wanted to go see in the county next door. They couldn't do something because they weren't covered, um, you know, or they didn't have the $3,500 to pay the deductible. What happens if you've got a family of four and your out-of-pocket maximum is thirteen nine? That's thirteen thousand nine hundred. I don't know how many folks have that in their account that they can pay that or would even be willing to if they had the option today to get something that's better covered. So there's less incentive there because they don't have to pay the premiums. But you know, I think we can help with those that. You know, so y'all would rather come in and say, you know, kind of like some of these supplemental insurances come in and who wants you to sign up. I don't want to put us in the same category as supplemental because we are not a supplemental insurance company. We are offering a base health plan that's going to have a stop loss. All the businesses out front here, uh, before the end of the day, they'll have my card. And the reason is that we can help every single one of them to prevent them from a, from a catastrophe. Okay, we're going to protect them from bankruptcy so they can keep the business open. Uh, or a supplemental company is going to come in, it's going to pay them $500 for the broken foot, and, and they're going to walk away. And the cost in return on that benefit is not there. Yeah. That, that, that's great as a supplement. If you've got supplemental accident coverage, because you have free coverage at work, right? So all your employees have a $3,500 deductible, which you're paying the premiums, but they're, they're liable if they have a claim. That's where AFLAC comes in for them, so they pay $100 a month to have supplement. We can do that. 
we can do that with the association. We can do it for less than what AFLAC would cover, and there's a laundry list of different benefits. I'm, I, I'm talking more about the, the, the mm -hmm. stop loss, what, protecting somebody from bankruptcy, giving them the cancer treatment that they need, giving them the ability to go to any doctor they want to in Nebraska or, or Houston. Uh, that, that's where we're different. So, but, but the challenge is going to be with employees that aren't paying a premium out of their own pocket to see the difference and benefit. Unfortunately, we all see that in hindsight. We all see that in hindsight when we pick the cheap plan and we sit and then we went a couple of years and nothing happened. And then the next thing you know, you have an accident. You start finding out the real side of your insurance. You start reading through the documents that came in the mail. What we're promising is that that won't happen because you know we have unconditionals that we do not compromise on. That's our company. But at the same time, uh, if you have a situation where you've got employees that see the value in their coverage and are looking for better coverage, we are going to be the option. With those that are ill or have you know special needs, the plan they're on right now is a great plan. They need a supplement to cover their deductible. Maybe you know something to help them endure the medical. We can help those folks out too. If they want to pay out of pocket and pay the difference, you know, sixty-two dollars a month or something like that, that have accident and sickness and hospital and then the benefits. So there's a lot of different things, not just now. Right. But we can do it for less money because we're not charging. We don't have a duck. We don't have a. We don't have a. Uh, you know, there's not a lizard, right? So, so, and, and at the same time, we've got 19 million individuals in our risk pool that, that we're basing our costs off. So we have the strength of 19 million folks. Where Oklahoma's high risk, You're, the rates that you all are paying for health choice are higher than they should be because Oklahoma's a high risk state. You've got three million people in the state of Oklahoma, and over and, and under 600,000 of them have insurance. And and and. and 80%, 79% of those are subsidized, you know, in, uh, for one reason or another, causing the rates to go up. So there's, there's a solution to this. It's not going to fit everybody, but at the same time, those it does fit, it's going to give them better insurance, it's going to provide them better coverage than what they currently have because they're not using it anyway. At the same time, we're going to save the county money with, you know, the bottom line figures. So and those are easy. We just have to assess them. Oh, it's, insurance is tough. There's mm -hmm. a lot to understand. Uh, yeah. Like I said, my big thing is I do not want any employee coverage to drop in any way, shape, or form. And that's my number one priority right now, yeah. taking care of them. Um, I was honestly thinking that we're talking about covering all employees and spouses and stuff. I didn't realize that you kind of want to just... You know, I'd be lying to you if I came in here and told you, and yes, we can do that. Okay, but I'd be I would be lying to you and I would be lying to the county and I would be cheating certain folks yeah. by doing that because well, you sure don't want to do that. The, so you have two options. You have you have the blanket option which gives everybody yeah. the same benefits. It's very expensive because everybody's getting a Cadillac plan. And that's what Health Choice is, Cadillac plan. Yeah. My proposition is to come in and to take a deeper look at those that aren't using the coverage. Maybe the younger ones, the younger ones with families, maybe those that just, you know, have been lucky and there's nothing going wrong with them yet. Those folks we can bring in on, and, and we can medically underwrite. I'm going to sit down with every single one of them. We're going to go through an application. We're going to apply them, get them approved, get the policies to them before they make a decision. That process will take up to 60 days. Uh, I can put the numbers together and build the census in two weeks, and I can have a, the application typically done and approved within 30 days. 45 days, we're sitting down and looking through the policies to make sure that everybody wants to stay on. Those that elect it have an additional up to 60 days to, to elect it. At that point, if they don't want it or they don't like it, they don't take it and they stay exactly where they are. We don't know the difference in savings. I can't tell you the, the, the difference in savings, what I'm going to save you until that day, but I can promise you that it'll be lower. We know that even if we, if we bring five people onto our policy, we'll save you money. If I bring 14 folks off of the current, blue, or the current uh, health choice plan, we'll save you uh, roughly $60,000 this year. 14 people. But we have to sit down, we have to do it long-handed. It's not easy. The government made this difficult for us. We sure. all know that. And so, so it's made our job terrible. Sure is. We're yeah. sort of specialists in this at this point because nobody else is willing to do it. Blue Cross and Blue Shield is not going to send an agent out here. There's a firm in Oklahoma City that will. 
at the same time, they're, they're not going to save you money. They're going to put you in their own risk pool. It's going to cost you money because you have 100 employees. You got a risk pool of 100. You got to be above about 500 to see the cost difference. So, and I can double check that because ultimately they've got a better deal on the synergy too. But I don't think that they do. This is adding to what you guys have to cut into your budget even more, to, to cut a big chunk of savings into your budget to make sure that you guys can keep those spouses and keep those children insured longer than what you would expect or what you had expected. I'm trying to keep them on as long as possible. But I think you leave it up to a vote. I think you, 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 you let Erin come up and you let her sit out there and she'll have a few more agents. We'll have pamphlets, we'll have brochures, we'll have literature. Let people come and have conversations. She can do that for a few hours a day. She can take applications. She can apply those that want to you know, apply and see what happens. And then and a lot of those are going to see the value proposition in the product and they're going to take it. And then that's just shedding weight off of you all. So, but that way it's not on you at all. We don't do this now. We have to wait till next week. Once we assign those employees out with health choice, you have to keep them for the whole year. You have an October enrollment for health choice, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. You just said 60 days, and you're yeah. Yeah, we're gonna. We're, so we're <laughs> we're at yeah. uh, but 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 we're gonna be decision making in 30. They're gonna have more time to make that decision. They'll have till the end of October, but we're we're right there. We're on the first of September as we speak. By the yeah. time we actually get Aaron up here with the booths and apps and all that stuff, there's faster ways to do that, and and you know. It can, and share that with you, but but we need to get we need to get I can have an individual on a Monday sitting in front of me, Tuesday in underwriting, Wednesday approved. By the following Wednesday, policy, cards, everything's in the mailbox. We're sitting down again at the kitchen table or at the at the business explaining the benefits to the employee. And and, and at that at that point, it's their choice to keep it under the under the ACA law. They have to have the option. So they have to have the option. They're not forcing anybody to do it. They're doing it on their own regard. But they're doing it with the understanding that they're going to take better insurance. And so it's going to be those that step in and say, I want I want to look at this. I want I want better options. Um, there's less incentive to do it because you all are you all are yeah you all are that's, aiding that's and That's concern. And even but, in trying this, I'm afraid y'all are going to get up here and everybody's going to be like. Well, because uh, the ones that have the biggest family in church are the youngest ones that really don't use it. Right. The That's older cool. people that realize the value in insurance and see savings and stuff, well, they the don't same. have kids. They don't have the extra mm -hmm. policy. I got a lot of single guys that's older, and, and so it's not really going to affect them where you're not doing employees. Yeah, it's going to have to be something that they're going to have to see the value in it because the the, 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 the they're not, they're not seeing the money go out. That, that is going to be a situation that's going to be a little different than what I anticipated. But at the same time, it, I'm willing to bet that, that Aaron can come up here on her own dime and sit out you know, wherever you guys want to put her up. And, and if you will put something out there that says that she's coming up to assess another insurance option, those that come and sign up, maybe she picks up 15. You know, again, that, that, that's going to be a huge difference in cost savings to the county, and it's going to provide better coverage to the uh, insurer and their family. So, they, but they will have to make that decision, mm -hmm. and it will be difficult. It will be more difficult because they're not paying out of pocket. Yeah, you know, that's that's what I'm seeing. Cause I'm thinking some of the younger guys that work for me that do have a spouse and wife on, they. Don't even want to talk about insurance. And they right, it's all they don't believe. Close it out. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's true. That's what we do. I mean, I, I literally, I, I went out and I, I mean, we do this every single day. I go out to people's homes and I sit with them and, and um, go out to businesses and sit with them and show them the value. Just a simple conversation. I make it as simple as possible. And um, when people start listening and they start hearing the differences. And seeing, you know, we talk about possibilities, and we talk out, you know, I'll ask them things like, you know, do you know someone who has had cancer, or do you know someone else whose child has had an accident, and and what that looks like? And um, this is what we can do, and I do it very simply, and they see it very quickly.
cutting the budget for your family and what we were doing more than half. So I'm thinking if we were to get Aaron up here on the 1st of September to, to, to sit down and, and maybe she, for a couple of days she takes applications. Maybe she, you know, can she can send out an email with blanket apps for anybody else that just missed her. Uh, if we can get those apps in by the first of September, we'll have approvals by the fifteenth, and that's including all the complications that will arise. Even with fifteen people, there are complications always. Approvals by the fifteenth, and then by October the first, the policies have all been sent. They have the policy options. They have their cards. They've got their deck pages. It's one hundred and fifty something pages. Aaron comes up and meets with however many of those are. We can do that in an individual setting. We can do that in a group setting. We'll figure that part out. We'll rent space if we need to. I can bring folks up from our Fort Worth office if I need to. They will fly in. Bring them up. We can sit down and explain the benefits to everybody in a group setting. They have, at that point, on October the 1st, 30 days to make a decision if, if this is something they want to do. If they decide they don't want to do it, it costs them nothing. Yeah. And, and tell them why. Tell them, hey, we're, we're trying to keep everybody insured as long as possible. Everybody's and I know, I know, me personally, I have been discussing yeah. my employees that a lot because, like I said, even though we made that very plain clear when we went to this full family insurance, a lot of them mm -hmm. suddenly have forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. You can't take our insurance. It's like, well, we don't want to. It's a luxury that they're to. not able to see and touch and feel. Yeah. Yeah. Well, show, them, show them that to the spreadsheet. That's percentage yeah oh I have I've been very open about how fast the money is maybe it's involved. maybe it's presented as a as a um, as an option before coverage for the spouses and dependents are removed we've got to go this route to you know purge some of the spending and, 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 and if this works then it may be something that, that keeps us from having to eliminate coverage from everybody but it, it can't be forced on them. They have to make their own decision. Oh, and, and I promise the way the money's dropping, sooner or later it's going to change, whether it's us just pay a percentage to the spouse or whether it goes employee plus one, whether it be a spouse or a child. Not. This full coverage will not last. I mean, financially, we just won't be able to. And whenever it stops, we're going to be there, and we're still going to keep them, we're still going to cover them, and, we're, and we're not, they're not going to see premium rates like what they're doing on the mm -hmm. open market. But that's, that's honestly, if that comes, if we start saying, hey, we're going to set pay 60% of your spouse instead of full, that's when I see them really being more open turning to you guys than I do now. Because right now it's going to be like, we're good. It's paid. We're not worried. Yeah, and that's, and that's, I mean, where that's we have just to being honest with you. Yeah. yeah, that's where we're going to have to educate you. Well, in, in most situations, I'll be honest, this is, you all are a statistical anomaly. Yeah. yeah, really, just because sure. business is the business world left this option a long time ago. And, sure, and um, awesome here. <laughs> but sure. but at the same time, and, and, and so probably you probably don't know that. Your hand when they ask that in, in class, going, how many yeah. counties pay for that? Because yeah, you know you're going to get mobbed because yeah. that's not something that's yeah. Well, yeah. we have done it because we do care about other people. Yeah. 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 Exactly right. Is Everybody's that, on cloud nine out here. Don't the Health Choice 2017 options, do you all have those in hand? No, we go to uh, class. Um, I have my class September 6th, and they'll hand those out then. The new rates and everything. It's going to be an interesting day. <laughs> Everybody's chomping at the bed right now. All yeah. the teachers. Are yeah, they're the same option with health choices. The same option yeah. with everybody. I just got yeah. a teacher covered. She's paying over eight hundred dollars just for her husband, and I got it way, way down for all everybody. Yeah. Now everybody's covered for way less than right. just covering her. And they're getting better benefits, and we're just like, it. It's so. It feels really good. To oh yeah. Oh yeah. Especially when those young families, you know, they're having well, two spouses. Is, is what it, what it is, and it, if they go on our open market, um, it's going to cost them even more money in deductible than what it is staying with Health Choice. But she doesn't even bring home a paycheck. Yeah. She might bring home two hundred dollars in a month, if even that. And he's self-employed, 
and his paychecks fluctuate. So if he has a low month, what are they going to do? So, you know, and it's just like we, we have to do something. But if something happens to my children while they're in school, like their son goes to culinary school and cut off the tip of his finger, like what if he cuts off a whole finger? You know, she's like, he's not insured and I can't do that. Yeah. So now they're all insured and spending less money. That figure for $5,000. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Figure's expensive. How much, how much does a uh, detached ligament? Yeah. It has to be attached. How much is that worth in your uh, association? Oh, well, if it's permanent, then it's if there's permanent paralysis, then it would be. Uh, it, was, it was a workman's comp. It's uh, a workman's comp. And have to have surgery. That'll be fair. If he has Affleck, but what would if he had yours? What would it be? His cost, his out-of-pocket cost, would be five thousand. Flat. Now the the actual surgery, depending on you know where he has it done, the reasonable cost. I'll be honest with you, that part of that cost is unregulated. That's why insurance is going up so much. Doctors will charge way be way more than what they used to to do that same procedure. So, but his out-of-pocket, so regardless of what that is, that's on the insurance company. That's why the rates are going up. But yeah. his out-of-pocket with us would be $500. He could be cash flow positive. 500 is their out-of-pocket. Yeah. 500 is their out-of-pocket. Yeah, they would have, um, you know, some other benefits that would possibly pay out, like if there's hospitalization stay and things like that. So, a day in the hospital would pay $800 to the employee. Uh, two days in the hospital would pay that minus oh, yeah, the accident coverage on, on all of our plans, the out-of-pocket maximum is 500. So on a sickness, it, it can be as high as 3,000, but at the same time, if there's any hospitalization stay, if it's due to one of 41 critical illnesses, then they've got a check comes back to them. Kind of like a, a, a Chesapeake Life a critical illness benefit, except for we integrate them all because our footprint is self-employed people. All those mom and pop shops outside, all those little businesses in town that y'all own, if you have a situation where you can't work, then a lot of people file bankruptcy, not because of the cost of the medical bills, but the cost of loss of doing business at work. So we come back in, we help you with short-term disability income, we even provide a little bit of term life insurance, just to get you over the gap. And in some cases, you know, we just have to look at it. But out-of-pocket max is easy, it's 500 bucks. How much you're gonna have coming back in? Depends on how many things happen. If you got struck by lightning at the same time, you fell off the back of the truck and had a heart attack, the security so bad, and there's a couple different things going on. There. That just sounds like my normal week, yeah. Yeah. I had a customer ask me one time, what happens if I break my ankle and have a heart attack at the same time? He said, you have two claims. And the funny thing is, is my neighbor did it six months ago. Had a heart attack, broke his ankle. So he had two claims. He made money on the deal, but we don't want to talk about that because that's against the law. I can't say that you're going to be cash flow positive walking out of an insurance claim, but yeah. let's be realistic. And I just did not have money to have a heart attack and broken ankle. Yeah. Yeah. It's not worth it, trust me. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. What we want to do is we want to protect people from a loss and protect them from, you know, a hundred thousand, three hundred thousand, a million dollar claim. That's easily done with insurance today, like what you all have in place. The problem is that the cost of doing business is so expensive and the out-of-pocket to the consumer is much higher than what it could be if you were with us. So we can save you money on the bottom line as far as what the monthly premium costs are by simply even just bringing 15% over. Those 15% are gonna have considerably better insurance, but you could provide the same association benefits in theory to everybody else in the group, even those that are of medically necessary need. But we have to, we have to put a census together each time, I'm sure. I don't imagine that we're going to save you a bunch to be good enough here today, but it would be. Well, I think we'll live there and come up and put the guys talk to them. The guys, gals, whatever. Do you have a place that she could she could bring a table and just set up somewhere and just have her not here? Not here. Uh, here. You need to go ahead and go out on location, too. You guys have, you know. My uh, shop's just crossed. Yeah. We have a, we have a, you know, we have a whole office of folks that could, that could literally dial names and phone numbers and just do a quick two-minute interview. So you just tell us how you want, to, how you want to do it, and we'll follow the rules. So typically, what we do in situations like similar to this one, where it's the public option, 
Yeah. We set up a booth and let them come to us and we have conversations. Yeah. Well, I have, I have no problem with doing this. Um, we're not, because we're not changing our county insurance now. I, when y'all came, I actually was thinking that y'all were coming here to talk about changing our county insurance. Given this option, it's no different than us giving them the option to have AFLAC come in. You know, it's their choice, it's their done, it's not us changing anything. I am concerned on you guys decide that that you're not going to have a whole lot take interest because right now that it is covered and you guys are really going to have to sell yourselves on that program. But I guess that's what's our business to do. So.